So I am honored. My name is Seth Seamus uh, from Eco Agriculture Partners to be the first of the, the bold, innovative speakers giving a great talk. So welcome here to the, landscape, to the Landscape Talks at the Global Landscape Forum. And so I thought that it would be appropriate to start this talk off with a picture of a landscape. And I think that since you all are Okay, um, since you all are here at the Global Landscapes Forum, you probably have some sense of how different types of land uses are related in a landscape. So you could see, you probably have a sense of how a forest is related to uh, an agricultural field and how that can be related to a city from a, an ecological or an agricultural perspective. But um, I think what we don't have a lot of experience in or less experience than we do ecologically is how these uh, investments relate in the landscape. Um, the fact that there is deforestation upstream that uh, reduces the return profile for that hydropower plant that's in the foreground. Uh, that hydropower plant doesn't control all of the different land, land uses and the, the pieces of land within that landscape, so they must rely on other actors, other stakeholders within the landscape. And so at Eco Agriculture Partners, we talk about this process of working with a variety of stakeholders towards common objectives at a landscape scale is integrated landscape management. So our hypothesis a few years ago, along with many others, are that we need to understand better the financial system and the investment system within a landscape context. So that understanding led to uh, a, a, a diagram like this. So this is kind of how we see a financial system in a landscape. So we have sources of finance, different kinds. So these are for-profit and these are non-for-profit sources. Um, we have foundations, we have local banks, we have companies, public agencies, even institutional investors. And those sources um, finance activities on the ground that we would distinguish, you know, asset investments, specific real things that are happening like agroforestry systems or agro-processing plants, as well as enabling investments. So those governance investments and those capacity building investments, they create the conditions for, for the, the, uh, the asset investments. So, but what distinguishes a landscape thinking from a financial perspective is not just that you, there's a f investment in a single you know, agroforestry farm, for example, but there, there's a, a coordination element that all these investments are working together towards common goals, that there's, there's a spatial coordination, there's sequencing of investments, there's certain enabling investments that come before asset investments. So <clears throat> what we began to discover is that there was a lot, a huge gap in capacities to, to coordinate investments at a landscape scale. So the kind of cone at the top of that, that diagram is kind of a landscape investment facilitation function that can do this coordination at a landscape scale. But there was not a lot of this happening. So what we thought would be useful is to create a tool for this type of coordination entity. And that's how we get, got to the landscape investment in finance tool. So here it is, so Lyft. So in a, from an immediate perspective, what Lyft does is take la multi-stakeholder landscape groups um, on a process of translating their joint visions, their joint action plans from uh, a vision to specific investable ideas. And when we say investable, that can mean you know, business for profit ideas, but, but also enabling you know, ideas. So we had experiences at Eco Agriculture Partners for many years where we'd work with these multi stakeholder platforms and they'd say, okay, you know, we got it. We know what we have to do. We're going to restore this riparian area. You know? um, and then you kind of drill down a little bit and say, well, what, what does that mean? You know, who's going to do it? You know, who's going to pay for it? And um, you know, it's hard to get deep. So this, this tool is to try to get deep, to translate these ideas into, into business, I, business plans and to then identify appropriate sources of finance. So they know that what is a, what is a private sector function versus what is a public sector function. So this is, um, and by the way, I'll, I'll tell you what, this is all available now. Um, it's split up, Lyft is split up into two documents right now. So there's the primer, which lays out the conceptual foundation for, for 
uh, integrated landscape investments, which includes answers to questions like, what is integrated landscape management? How can you produce financial value from landscape action? What are different ways of blending finance? How can finance be coordinated at a landscape scale? And this material is referred back to throughout the process, the sort of lift process. Um, and the manual is the kind of the step-by-step -step of all of this. Um, that goes on over you know, a long period of time. This isn't something that you go and give a workshop to in a weekend and it's all done. You know, this can take a year, two years, many years. Um, so it's split up into three stages. The first is assessing financing needs of priority investments in the landscape plan. And um, this is essentially the, the moment where landscape initiatives clarify their business ideas. And we have a variety of tools and worksheets in that process, you know, agendas for, work, for workshops to go through that process. This is just an example. Don't try to read this. Some of you may be familiar with the business model canvas. This is something that's you know, taught in business schools to um, get people to clarify business ideas, value proposition, costs, benefits. So we've kind of created a version of this that's a bit more landscapey that, um, that that entrepreneurs or, or you know, partnerships can fill out as they, they clarify ideas. The second part of uh, the tool is the one in which um, you try to identify specific sources of finance for your idea. Um, there are a, there's a lot of, of challenges with you know, financial literacy in the, the places where we work. People don't know what's available or know kind of what to look for, how to look for it. So this takes them through a process of figuring out what is most appropriate and then also um, accessing information for you know, specific, specific investors. So for example, something we might go through is to figure out you know, where do you sit, the type of finance you need, um, how, what is the deal size, what is the risk return profile, um, how much time do you need in order for this investment to be paid back? And depending on where you are, you would ident identify yourself and say, oh, you know what, actually what I'm looking for is something that is more appropriate for a local bank. Or maybe what I'm looking for is something for Althelia, an impact investor. Um, sort of start there and then uh, we have mechanisms to kind of access more specific information. Finally, um, um, the initial kind of wave, wave of potential investments that comes through this, this, the first use of Lyft um, you know, has these experiences, and there's a process of kind of reporting back, exchanging information, deciding as a group, um, are we going to kind of go our own separate ways with these investments and then try a new wave of investments? Have we come up against barriers that we need to address as a group? Do we, uh, are land tenure issues so, um, so intractable in this place that we need to develop an advocacy campaign before any of these uh, investments are going to work? So it's a, it's a check in time and uh, a plan to develop a more comprehensive strategy and potentially kind of start the process all over again. So um, we've tested this now, and I should say also, we, this has been done in, in collaboration with IUCN Netherlands, um, and we've tested this in three landscapes, in the Philippines, Honduras, and Tanzania, and there's a plan to roll it out um, in a larger way in eight to 10 landscapes this next year in partnership with IUCN Netherlands. I actually just spoke to a colleague at Conservation International that, that, that says that they're now using this lift tool, and we have some other partners as well who are very interested. What we'd love to do is create a community of practice around this tool so um, we can all learn from each other over time. So if you're interested in that or learning more, please talk to me. My name is Seth, um, or go to liftkit.info. Uh, another colleague, Lewis Wirtz, is here too, and he'd be happy to talk to you about this as well. Thank you very much.